Meta has just shown off a series of prototype headsets from their R&D division, Reality Labs. Some of these are really futuristic, so let's take a look. First up, we have Butterscotch, a headset designed to come as close to human eye or retinal resolution as possible. What this actually means in the context of VR is achieving a very high angular pixel density, with Zuckerberg claiming that you need to reach around 60 ppd to match reality. Just short of this, Butterscotch offers an impressive 55 pixels per degree, and while it wasn't explicitly stated, it seemed to be implied that this was an average across the display and not a peak value. While this massive pixel density serves to make the view through the headset incredibly clear and offers really good text legibility, it comes at a serious cost to FOV. The Butterscotch prototype's FOV is less than 60 degrees horizontally, which makes it worse than every headset we have listed on VR Compare right back to 2005. Of course, you have to remember, this is a prototype and the entire point is maximizing PPD, so the low FOV is pretty excusable in this case. Moving on to something a bit more novel, Half Dome is a headset that can modify its focal length depending on where the wearer is looking. This allows for objects to remain in focus even if they're at different distances from the user. So imagine you're holding something in your hand, if it's close to your face you could focus on it, but even if you bring it far away from your face, provided that you're looking at it, it will remain in focus. Meta actually already showed off Half Dome back in 2019, before they rebranded from Oculus. The original prototypes created a varifocal effect by using stepper motors, which could adjust the position of the screen relative to the optical stack, with about a centimetre of range. That's not all though, Meta's latest Half Dome prototype uses a solid state varifocal lens system, which involves a stack of lenses that react differently to polarised light, as well as electronically activated polarising filters. What this means is that they can change the focal distance just by activating the polarizing filters in the assembly, which can be done entirely electronically, removing the need for moving parts at all. By the way, these automatic varifocal systems are very different to the simple diopter adjustment found on headsets like the R-Para, because the entire system is automatically driven by data from eye tracking to make sure it tracks where you're looking. Next up we saw Starburst, an HDR headset prototype that uses an extremely bright LED backlight in order to produce vivid whites and extremely high contrast ratios in comparison to standard VR headsets. In fact, Meta claimed that Starburst can reach a peak brightness of 20,000 nits, which is 200 times more than that of the Quest 2. If that is true, that is nuts. So how does it actually achieve this? Well, Starburst has a super bright LED backlight with a massive heatsink attached and an active cooling system to keep it from burning out. Cooling is a massive issue for displays like these, and right now it's pretty clear that you can't really have a display like this without a large thermal mass or a cooling system to prevent it from getting too hot, which would obviously make it not very practical for a use case like a VR headset just yet. On top of that, there's really no doubt that a backlight that strong would really drain the battery of a standalone headset incredibly quickly. Meta also showed off Holocake 2, a headset that uses ultra-thin holographic optics that actually make the optical stack even thinner than pancake lenses and certainly thinner than traditional aspherical or Fresnel lenses. While they didn't explain the optical stack for Holocake 2 in much detail, you can see from this image here that it really is an incredibly thin headset, and Meta has claimed that it's their thinnest headset prototype they've ever produced. Something that isn't spoken about very much with VR headsets nowadays is the amount of torque that it actually puts on your neck while you're wearing it, especially for standalones where the entire compute unit is as far away from your head as possible, putting most of the weight at the very end. Having a very thin optical stack actually really eliminates this problem, as it puts the entire compute unit and battery very very close to your head, which makes the headset put much less strain on your neck. Finally, Meta also showed off Mirror Lake, which is a concept headset that hasn't yet been produced, based on the technology in these four prototypes. While this headset is very, very far from production right now, Meta intends for it to use holographic lenses and the automatic varifocal optical stack described previously. However, right now it's so far from production and even prototyping that I really don't think it's worth considering this headset for a good few years. Regardless, the tech they've demonstrated via their four working prototypes definitely is real, and while it's not production ready yet, it's very promising to have seen these demos. So honestly, it's great to get an update on Meta's R&D into VR hardware. By the way, if you'd like to get some more in-depth information about these headsets, you should definitely check out Tested's video, where they actually get hands-on with each of these prototypes and they have an interview with Mark himself where he talks about the technology. It's absolutely worth the watch, and I'll link it for you in the description. So, what do you think about these prototypes? 
Personally, I'm a huge fan of the VAR Vocal headset, and I really hope that the technology is not too expensive to make its way into consumer headsets within a couple years. But at the end of the day, we'll just have to wait and see. Hey, thanks for checking out this recap of Meta's latest VR prototypes. If you're a fan of what I'm doing and you'd like to keep up with the channel, feel free to subscribe. I'm still getting things off the ground here, but I'm really happy with how they're going so far, and honestly, the support I've had from you guys has been incredible, so thank you for that. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.